My name is Ruben Gombalani and this is Worst Night Left. disease which is found or which which still exists in this particular patient. How do we achieve this particular remission or consolidation stage? It's really done by what a repeated cycle of chemotherapeutic what agents. Although this particular chemotherapeutic agent like we said before has an adverse effect which manifests itself as what bone marrow hypoplasia, some patients who have what poor prognosis usually require what stem cell transplant at this stage of uh, therapy. All right, talking about the next stage of our, our therapy, which is what remission or uh, maintenance stage, upon if the patient is still in, uh, in is, is still is still in a remission state, that means uh, uh, if the patient is still in a remission state at this point in time, then the maintenance uh, therapy is administered. But this particular maintenance therapy is only important for what acute lymph what plastic leukemia. Okay, if the patient is still in a remission stage, the maintenance therapy can be administered for as long as three years. So that means the duration of this maintenance therapy is what three years, as far as the patient does not uh, go into what what relapse, as far as the disease does not go into what, a relapse what state. You can continue to administer what, this particular uh, uh, maintenance therapy. Although the number of drugs involved in this particular maintenance therapy is lower compared to that involved in what the induction uh, state actually. Alright, let's dive into acute myeloid leukemia. So what is acute myeloid leukemia? Acute myeloid leukemia is a malignant disorder of the bone marrow in which the hematopoietic precursor cells are arrested in the early line of differentiation. Okay, one thing about acute myeloid leukemia is that it's much more common in adults than in children which has a median onset age of what, 50 years. Another unique feature of this particular acute myeloid leukemia that differentiates this disease from any other blood-related disease is that in acute myeloid leukemia, we have uh, the presence of more than 20% of blood cells in the bone marrow. All right, then what are the pathophysiological processes that takes place during acute myeloid leukemia? Uh, the, the acute myeloid leukemia occurs due to what maturation of what arrests of what the myeloid progenitor cells in their line of what differentiation. Okay, this particular arrest is due to what uh, the activation of an abnormal gene, and this abnormal gene is activated due to what certain genetic mutations such as what uh, 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 translocation, chromosomal what translocation. Okay. As a result of this arrest, two disease processes manifest themselves. The first one, the first disease process manifests due to what the suppression of what bone marrow activity, and the second disease process manifests itself due to what the leukemic infiltration of what other vital organs in the body. Due to the suppression of bone marrow activities, just like we've discussed before, you are going to experience the patient will present with what certain anemic symptoms like dizziness, fatigue. Exertional dyspnea, tachycardia, as well as what cardiac outflow moment on what physical examination. But due to what the infiltration of what are uh, very important uh, organs, such as what the bone, the the, 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 the the liver, the spleen, the gonad, sometimes the kidney, and most importantly, sometimes what the central nervous system, the patient will also present with certain what unique what symptoms. Okay, now what are the symptoms now? If the patient has leukemic infiltration into his what is spleen, you're gonna experience what the patient is gonna have what splenomegaly. Now, this splenomegaly will present itself in the form of what easy sight. This patient will be easily what will get easy satisfied on eating food, as well as what the patient is gonna complain of what left of a quadrant what heaviness. Okay, now this when 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 patients are having what symptoms due to what neuroleukemia, or you can just say when the, the cells are able to infiltrate into the central nervous system, the patient.
patient will present with symptoms that are related to what intra increased intracranial pressure. Those such as what vomiting, headaches, as well as symptoms that are related to what cranial nerve pulses. Okay now, what are symptoms like we've discussed earlier, which relate to what neutropenia or what easily susceptibility to what the infection, and also when the patient uh, uh, is when the patient is in a thrombocytopenic state, you have what the patient bleeds easily. And then especially this that is a unique feature of this particular in this particular patient in which you're gonna experience a, what a particular bleeding in the what in the lower extremities as well as you're gonna have a visual multiple what echimosis in the skin of this particular patient. But mind you, if this particular leukemic cells are able to infiltrate into the skin, you're gonna have what we we'll call leukemic cutis. What is leukemic cutis? They are just what non palpable rashes that appears on the skin, which are, which becomes itching over time. For this particular patient. Okay, now how did you uh, diagnose acute myeloid what, leukemia? However, in the laboratories, this acute myeloid leukemia is divided has at least has four different classes. We have what the the myeloid monocystic a type of acute myeloid leukemia based on laboratory findings. We have what the monocystic type of acute myeloid leukemia. We also have what the erythroid type of acute myeloid leukemia after what the megacarocystic type of acute myeloid leukemia. Okay then let's jump on the bandwagon into the deep laboratory studies on acute myeloid leukemia. Okay when you suspect a patient has acute myeloid leukemia, when you order a, a complete blood count or CBC count of this particular patient, what did you see? And the CBC count of this particular patient, you're gonna notice anemia. Although in this particular case of anemia, the patient might have a normal or even high uh, mean cost uh, MCV, mean, mean MCV, or as well as you're going to experience either a uh, leukocytopenic state, which will be as low as 1 by 10 to the power of 9 per liter, or as high as 500 by 10 to the power of 9 per liter. Then when you, when, when you actually take a look at the per, uh, peripheral blood film of this particular patient, you're gonna have, you're gonna see what blast cells. Of course, you should see blast cells because uh, acute, acute, most acute leukemia they are marked by the increased accumulation of immature, primitive blood blast cells in the blood of such patients. Okay, now when you also order uh, in the in the same uh, peripheral blood uh, film of this particular patient, you're gonna see what we call a leukemic gap. Okay, what is a leukemic gap? A leukemic gap exists in a situation where we have absence of mid-stage uh, progenetic what, cells. That means we have absence of cells such as well the myelocytes as well as well the metamyelocytes in the blood film of this particular patient. Okay, when you carry out a chemical or biochemical study on the blood of this particular patient, we're gonna increase and we're gonna notice an increase in the level of lactose dehydrogen, which is LDH will increase. And then you're gonna when you carry out uh, also the PT time, which is the protromin time, will also increase in this particular patient, as well as the, uh, the, uh, the activated partial thromboplastin time will also increase in this particular patient. Also, we're going to have a decrease in fibrinogen in the uh, blood of this particular patient, and also increase in the what, in what we call fibrin degradation products in, this, in the blood of this particular patient. But if you ask yourself, why do you have increase in the fibrinogen level in this and the blood of this particular patient? It's mostly due to what the DIC syndrome that occurs in patients who have what, uh, acute myeloid leukemia, which is the disseminated intravascular with coagulopathy that occurs in most patients. Which who present with this particular uh, condition? Okay. However, the treatment of this particular uh, of this patient that are that are suffering from this particular uh, condition entails two things. First, chemotherapy, like we rightly rightly say, as well as what uh, uh, stem cell transplant. That means in patients who are who have very poor uh, prognosis, you have to carry out uh, stem cell transplant, especially in the remission consolidation stage of the therapy. All right, the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia, like we said, we have the chemotherapeutic uh, principle as well as what the transplant, which is the stem cell transplant principle. Okay, let's talk about the, about the chemotherapeutic principles, which is conventional for every uh, leukemic therapy. We have three phases, but although in the acute myeloid leukemia, we only have like two phases because the maintenance phase uh, is not actually important for patients with acute myeloid leukemia, except their prognosis is very poor. Well, let's talk about the the remission induction phase of acute myeloid uh, leukemia. In the remission induction phase of acute myeloid leukemia, you get to understand that this particular uh, leukemia, uh, this particular state is, is, is very unique. It's, it differs from the acute uh, lymphoblastic state because 
the cells in acute malaria leukemia they respond to very few drugs. That means you don't need to dose the patient with a lot of chemotherapeutic agents. You just need to give them very few dose drugs, which will be uh, sufficient enough to induce remission in this particular patient. Okay, now what drugs do you use for the induction uh, remission of uh, acute what myeloid leukemia? You can use drugs such as what the sertraline, which is a very good drug to be used for uh, induction of acute myeloid leukemia. Also, you can use drugs such as what the uh, the, the atropocyte, the drugs such as the atropocyte is also a good example uh, to use for acute uh, mild or what, leukemia. You can also use uh, drugs such as what the uh, dimethyltryptamine, which is a good example of drug to use for what acute mild or leukemia. But also, you can also decide to give a continuous line of what dimethyltryptamine for at least five days, or maximum of seven days, for such patients. This particular uh, combination therapy would be enough to induce remission in such patients with acute myeloid leukemia. But okay, now talking about the second uh, stage of therapy, which is what the, the, the remission uh, uh, consolidation stage of therapy. Now, what you do is just you are trying to prevent the growth of what those leukemic myeloid leukemic uh, cells by what uh, intensifying some uh, intensifying what the line of therapy you've already started in the induction what stage. So. In this particular stage, also, if the patient has, like we said before, if the patient has a very poor prognosis, you have to uh, go to your last resort, which was stem cell transplant for certain type of patients.